Good afternoon, and thank you for joining me for this update on Jacksonville's recovery from COVID-19. Joining me today for questions is Sheriff Mike Williams, Fire Chief Keith Powers, Emergency Operations Center Director Steve Woodard, and Director Daryl Joseph from our Parks, Recreation, and Community Services Department to take questions. Uh, as we mourn the terrible death and killing of George Floyd, uh, here in Jacksonville, uh, we've had the last two nights, very large, very peaceful protests. And uh, I just wanna thank our city for expressing themselves as we mourn and as you all work, everybody works for change. Thank you for doing it peacefully. The latest update from the Florida Department of Health reports a cumulative total of 1,702 positive cases of COVID-19 in Duval County, 277 hospitalizations and 51 deaths. We've performed over 58,000 tests with a positive percentage of 2.9%. The improvements we've seen in these figures is further proof that we have flattened the curve and we're ready to move forward with further reopenings in our city. Yesterday, Governor Ron DeSantis announced that beginning Friday, June 5th, Florida will enter phase two of the safe, smart, step-by-step -step plan for reopening the state. That means that bars and pubs can reopen with 50% capacity indoors and, and unlimited outdoor seating with appropriate social distancing, six feet. People may only get service if seated. Entertainment venues, such as movie theaters, bowling alleys, concert houses, auditoriums, playhouses, and arcades can operate at 50% capacity with appropriate social distancing and sanitation. Tattoo parlors, acupuncture, tanning, and massage establishments may operate while adhering to guidance from the Florida Department of Health. Restaurants can once again allow bar top seating with appropriate social distancing. And retail stores can operate at 100% capacity with continued social distancing and sanitation protocols. This also includes gyms and fitness centers. I'm glad that Governor DeSantis is taking these steps to reopen more parts of our city and our economy. So many of our neighbors are struggling and this will help get us all back everyone back on their feet. But we cannot afford to be complacent. The virus is with us, and if we continue on this path of reopening our communities, we must learn to move forward responsibly. That means exercising personal responsibility and taking measures to reduce the risk of spreading the virus, such as wearing a mask when you're indoors in dense public spaces around people, washing and sanitizing your hands frequently, and maintaining social distancing. Today is June 4th, which means in one month, we will be celebrating Independence Day. Jacksonville's annual downtown fireworks show has become a proud 4th of July tradition throughout our region. And this year, we're looking to make it bigger, better, and safer for all. Not only will there be a show downtown, we will also have displays in new areas throughout our city so that citizens can safely watch socially distanced from their own communities. There will be no central place for fireworks with other events happening. It will be fireworks only, and again, it will be spaced out through different parts of our city, so people aren't, don't need to congregate in one place to experience this. We look forward to working with local TV stations to broadcast the fireworks to those that choose to stay home. We're still deciding on the additional locations for expanded, the expanded fireworks show, and we'll let you know the details as soon as we have them. We want to ensure those locations offer great vantage points, but will allow for proper social distancing while we celebrate the birth of our nation. We have a few updates today from Duval County Public Schools. Summer meals will be provided at select school locations and bus stops beginning next Monday, June 8th. All kids ages five to 18 can go to any district managed open school site or select bus stop from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. A full list of locations and menu is available at duvalschools.org backslash summer meals. Another big deal, uh, high school football is back. There will be a three phased approach to getting students back on the gridiron. Phase one begins June 15th 
focuses on conditioning. Phase two, expected to begin June 29th, will include weightlifting. And phase three, expected to begin July 13th, will mark the return of practices. I commend Superintendent Green, the school board, and the entire Duval County Public School System team for their hard work during this crisis and on our road to recovery. Thank you for all of your service to our children. Finally, a quick reminder that hurricane season started this week, and today is the last day to take advantage of the statewide disaster preparedness sales tax holiday. Make sure you have your emergency kits stocked and ready to go. You can review a suggested list in our new emergency preparedness guide available on jacksready.com. Before we close, I wanna say thank you to the people of Jacksonville, your actions during the, during the COVID-19 crisis and even with the recent protest is to be commended. Back in March, when all of this began, I mentioned a quote from Fred Rogers about looking for the helpers in a time of crisis. We've had many helpers here in Jacksonville. We are a city that is full of kind, generous and compassionate people. So many individuals and businesses in our community have worked hard to provide food, masks, sanitizer, and other personal protective equipment to local hospitals and healthcare workers. We have amazing healthcare workers and first responders who bravely and selflessly put the needs of our community for their own day in and day out. Also wanna to thank to all of you that worked our grocery stores and provided all of our essential services during the this time of pandemic. And we have many in our community who are willing to stand up and speak out against injustice and work towards making us a better, stronger, and working hard towards the fragile idea that is one city, one Jacksonville. I'm grateful for the opportunity to serve as your mayor. There's no better city and there's no better people. Thank you all for joining me for this update. With the continued collaboration from our partners and responsible actions of our citizens, I'm confident we'll be able to move into phase three in short order. With that, we're happy to take questions. AG with Florida Politics. Hey Mayor, good afternoon. Um, I wanna ask you about the dual track messaging you're doing. You're courting the Republican National Convention, but at the same time, you're trying to mollify protesters with quote, supporting the peaceful protest. The president said he's the president of law and order. He said when the looting starts, when the shooting starts. If the Republican convention comes here, how do you keep those two messages from colliding? And how do you keep the peace in the streets, given that the president has provoked confrontations, urged the military and National Guard to be in city after city, holding down um, the protesters? Yeah, AG, well, first, let me say that uh, uh, this event projected $100 million economic impact uh, would be jobs uh, specifically related to the event and an economic impact around our city. Uh, if the, we want the Republican National Convention here, the reason we're talking to them is because they are considering a move. That's why we're interested. Uh, we would do the same thing if Democrats wanted to move their convention. I'd say, open arms, let's go, it's economic impact. Also demonstrates the ability of our city to put on events in a safe, responsible way as we work through COVID-19. Uh, as it relates to uh, keeping the peace in our city, uh, the people of Jacksonville have demonstrated uh, their, the ability to uh, have their voices heard in large crowds uh, and to do it responsibly in a safe way. And uh, I'm gonna continue in the days and weeks and months and years ahead uh, to work with all people in our city, uh, even where we have voices of disagreement, even where we have uh, historical uh, institutional issues that we have to deal with uh, that have been in, our, in and with our city for a very long time. Uh, we, can, uh, we can put on events in our city uh, that some may disagree with, and we can do it peacefully and create jobs in an economic boom. Marilyn with WJXT. Uh, can you guys hear me? 
Yes, Did okay, thank you. Yes, um, so first question is sort of for uh, JS. So I wanted to get your initial response to getting a grant for community policing programs at $5 million and 40 new officers for community policing. I would also like for the mayor to chime in on that as well. And I wanted to kind of put it into perspective with community policing being based on trust and accountability, what role does that play when it comes to releasing body camera footage when some people are criticizing JSO for that lack of transparency? And then I would like for the mayor to chime in on, um, would you be willing or even considering uh, examining excessive force policies within JSO? Sheriff, I'll let you first answer and then I'll, I'll, I'll close on the questions. Sure. So thanks for the question. First of all, on the on the grant, um, I think we've we've passed an initial hurdle. I don't know that we have completely uh, been awarded uh, fully that grant as of yet, but that is something that we pursued uh, earlier this year. Um, listen, the, the current economic situation in the city may even impact that. So a lot of discussion left to uh, to be had about the grant um, in terms of you know, how does community policing impact trust in the community? I mean, we have worked here long beyond this weekend, obviously, uh, but you can go back and we can point to numerous programs where it's really all about trying to gain the trust in the community, involve them in what we're doing. Uh, it, it, it's essential to law enforcement, not only in Jacksonville, but, but nationwide. So we'll continue to have those conversations. We'll continue to have, I, Prior to this meeting today, my conference room was full of people uh, and they just left so we could do the Zoom call. And it was about uh, some of the same topics we've been talking about for, for weeks and months. Uh, body camera footage, we will always continue to be in a posture of, of learning. Uh, it's a new piece of technology for us. It's a new piece of evidence in these cases. So we're gonna always continue to evaluate with uh, the state attorney's office, with you know other players in that conversation you know, when is the earliest time in the process we can release? Uh, and again, those conversations are all going before this weekend. So we'll continue to do that. I think it's very important that we have uh, those ongoing conversations to make sure that, that A, we're responsive uh, to the community and those questions, and B, that we get that right and, uh, and that we're able to, uh, you know, make sure that we have a process that not only works for uh, the legal system, but works for the community as well. Yeah, I would just add that uh, I know in the five years I've been here and all the time I've spent with our sheriff, uh, that the commitment to community policing, this isn't new for them. He's been committed to this and has been working this um, uh, before we even saw these protests that we're having, having now. Um, and I would say that I continue to work closely with our sheriff and our state attorney. They are the law enforcement experts. They are independently elected, uh, but I know that they are, they both care about every single neighborhood and every single person in this community. Uh, and uh, as they review and work their policies uh, to make sure that they are um, appropriate, uh, I'll continue to work with them and provide the resources that they need to make sure they can can do their jobs and represent the community as a whole. Jim with WJXT. Do you hear me now? Because I, there seems to be a problem there. Okay, yes. Go. Gotta ask you um, on the Republican National Convention, a lot of pro and con response, not everyone happy with that coming here. Is this something that could happen and can we afford it? This would take a lot of extra policing. You're going to have protests from all sides on here. And if the sheriff could weigh in on this too, if this were a possibility, given this time that we're already seeing our budget strain because of COVID-19, is this something that we could really afford? I also have a question following this regarding our parks department because of the camps that are due to open up or sign up this week. But I wondered if you could address the cost of bringing that convention here and if we could really do that. Yes, uh, significant fundraising happens from uh, private individuals, private organizations. 
And uh, I think it's important that, that an opportunity presented to us uh, coming out of a pandemic <clears throat> to uh, be host to uh, hundred million plus dollar economic impact to our city responsible thing to do is for us to pursue it, pursue it in a safe, responsible way. And uh, uh, I know it's, uh, you know, it's going to be a heavy lift. Um, there's no definite answer as to whether it's coming here or not. But uh, I think that if we land it, people are going to appreciate the jobs uh, and we'll do it responsibly. Sheriff, you want to add? Yeah, so Jim, I can just tell you this is not a uh, this is not a JSO only type event, and so we would have support from around the country, uh, at, with, from local law enforcement agencies around the country. Um, obviously, federal partners weighing in heavily on an event like this. So um, it's more a coordination planning event, but. Uh, it, all of that, from our perspective, all is about keeping the event and the city safe. And we would have, uh, again, lots and lots of help uh, doing that. Nothing JSO could undertake on its own. And Jim, I would add the federal government provides dollars to both political parties for security, uh, as the sheriff just mentioned, uh, surrounding the events of both political parties in our country. And Jim, you had a second question on parks that I'll let I, you. And I do, I do have a second question on that, but a little bit more on this. But is this really something that, you know, you've seen the outcry of some citizens saying, please don't bring this here because they're concerned about the security. They're concerned about the demonstrations that a convention would bring. But on the parks as well, I know that was the deadline, uh, or not a deadline, but as when people can start signing up for summer camps, uh, there were some concerns with the website not being ready on that, but are we set to go on that as well? But if you could address the convention first. Um, Jim, we've got to get back to business in our city. We've just had a entire economy shut down because of a global pandemic. And uh, any, anything you do in life, there's risk. There are no certainties, but we've demonstrated the ability in this city over a number of years uh, to host events and move forward responsibly. So uh, I would say to people that are concerned, we're going to have all the security and safety protocols in place, uh, but I'm not going to make economic decisions for this community out of fear. Uh, if we were doing that, Heck, we'd probably all still be in our homes right now because COVID-19 is still with us. So we've got to make responsible decisions uh, and make sure that the sa safety and security of our people are first, and that's what we've done and are going to continue to do. Daryl, I'll let you take the other question. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, Jim, as it relates to the website for summer camp, yes, we start registration tomorrow at noon. Uh, you can go to the City of Jacksonville Parks website uh, and we'll begin the registration process. Summer camp will start on June 15th and go all the way to July 24th. Thanks, Daryl. Sky with WJCT. Can you hear me now? Are you able to hear me? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, Mayor, late last week you tweeted, uh, we hear you and we want to work with you in regards to the protests and the organizers. Have you been able to talk with any of the organizers of the peaceful protests and what do you, Mayor, want to see change, whether it be uh, in terms of JSO or issues you said in your opening remarks? that you, you think have been going on for a while in this city? Anything more specific than just, you know, we want to work with you? Look, uh, both the sheriff and myself and, and the state attorney have, not only with the people that have organized these protests, uh, have expressed their concerns to each of us individually and sometimes as a group 
about inequities uh, in, in and throughout the city that have been around for decades. So us listening to and working with individuals is not new. Um, I think there, in fact, I know with the terrible killing of George Floyd, there is uh, incredible focus and outrage right now about change. And, uh, you know, there's questions about body cameras. There are questions about funding of the police department. There are questions about use of force. All of which I know, having worked with our sheriff, uh, he's committed to doing the right thing and making sure that people are equally represented. But we, Sheriff and I have talked recently, and gave recently as yesterday about this. We're gonna, we'll work and talk to anybody that wants their voices heard with us uh, and uh, try to affect the change that we can. Um, We've had neighborhoods neglected for decades as well that we've begun to invest in uh, through our budgets and are going to continue to do that. But uh, yeah, we hear their voices uh, and have been listening to and working with many voices for a number of years now. Elizabeth with Action News. Hi, Mayor. Uh, touching on what you just said, saying the coronavirus is still here, it's absolutely true. I talked to a couple local doctors who say it's still a concern. So I have a couple questions based off of that. The first one is testing. I believe Lot J is open to anyone for, for free for testing today, also including antibody testing. So my first question is, how will antibody testing help track uh, the spread of the coronavirus as more people are going out into the public now. And then my second question in terms of phase two, we've talked about enforcement before. How do we plan on still enforcing some of these guidelines because some of these places can only open if they're following guidelines. So how does enforcement weigh in and, and what is that? I think the antibody tests give us an idea of how widespread uh, COVID-19 uh, has been and is in our community. Uh, also, when you match that data with hospitalizations and deaths, it gives us an idea of the, um, uh, you know, exactly how dangerous and likely it is that if you do get it, that you end up hospitalized and you end up potentially in a life or death situation. Uh, Director Woodard, do you, would you like to add to that? If, do you have any insight on the antibody testing? Yes, uh, thank you, Mayor. Also note that we have over two dozen testing sites that are available in the county, not just Lot J or Legends. Uh, I actually went through the uh, test myself. The antibody test took about 15 minutes, and it does reassure people and encourage anyone to get the antibody and the regular test. Yeah, as it relates to enforcement on phase two, as, as I said on phase one, uh, people are largely behaving responsibly. Uh, and if businesses aren't, uh, I, from what I'm hearing from people, their customers will not, uh, they'll go somewhere else. But uh, we've demonstrated, we've been in phase one for weeks now. Uh, responsible behavior have not seen significant spikes. And so certainly if we get complaints, uh, we'll have folks that will check in with the establishments, see what's happening there uh, and encourage them to uh, follow the guidelines, and I believe that most will. Uh, we don't want to end up in a situation uh, where we are uh, a police state uh, dictating every little thing about what every single person does. But if th anything came to our attention that was uh, not safe and, and putting people's lives at risk, we would certainly react accordingly. Hannah with WOKV. Hi, Mayor. Do you or the sheriff plan on walking with the with city council as they walk through downtown Sunday? I'll answer the first. I'll take a first shot at it and then I'll let the sheriff weigh in. Um, the sheriff and I have talked about this, not just with these protests. Uh, over five years that we've been in office, whether it's a protest that you're seeing now or uh, something happens as it relates to public safety, where I may feel uh, that it, my gut is I need to be there, I need to be seen and heard. Uh, and then I'll have a conversation with our sheriff and others. And there are times where uh, 
the I put law enforcement resources at risk because they have to focus on me if I'm there, which isn't responsible. Uh, and the, the pro these protests were the same way. I talked to the sheriff about potentially being out in the middle of some of these. Uh, literally, it would have to be men and women focused on me. That's a distraction uh, to them doing their jobs and making sure the entire protest moves peacefully. Now, clearly, if I did that, uh, you guys would give me a great photo op and look, say all these accolades on television and in print, but uh, I would not really have affected change. So what I'm interested, there may, there may be a time, Mike and I, where we go out and walk. We've talked about this. This isn't the time. Uh, I'm interested in uh, action items that we can do through legislation and budgets that will address the needs of the people, jobs, economic disparities, and some of the other issues that you've heard uh, folks express in, in the protest. Sheriff, you, would you like to add? Yeah, just to, uh, just to tag on that, I, I absolutely will engage in uh, a, a walk. I don't know that it's going to be Sunday, uh, but, but we will do that. I've, I've told people that uh, I just had, again, a meeting, community meeting before this uh, meeting and got asked the same question. So it'll happen. Again, I don't think it's going to be Sunday, but, but we will put something together or be a part of something that's put together in the near future. And that, and, and I, and I agree with the sheriff on that. It will do that at the appropriate time uh, when it uh, makes, makes the most sense in terms of uh, safety of our people. Mark Woods with the times union. Hi. Um, thanks mayor. Um, for, for two and a half months, you've been preaching um, that, it's the responsibility of, of hand washing, of social distancing, of masks, and all these things. And as recently this week, you said, you know, reminded folks, COVID is still here. Um, it would be irresponsible to pretend otherwise. We need to continue to do these things. And to your credit, I think that's part of the reason our rate is at where it is. I, how on earth is it responsible? to invite people from 50 states to come here and gather and fill an arena in August. That's well, the first half. The second yeah. half, that's the public health. You you talk one city, one jacks. Do you feel like this will advance that? Uh, yeah, to answer the first part of the question, uh, it's in August. And I think the governor said this yesterday in response to a question. We're not going to not plan things uh, in the months and uh, weeks ahead and as we move through the end of the year. Uh, as, as we deal with and mitigate COVID-19, uh, we may be into mid-August, end of August, uh, where there's been major mitigation on COVID-19 and we continue to learn more about its spread and what the risks are to our hospital and health systems and truly what the risk is uh, of death beyond maybe uh, skilled nursing facilities uh, and uh, those with uh, compromised immune systems. So we're going to plan. We're going to move forward economically. Now, uh, when we get into August, whatever health, whatever health protocols uh, or arrangements need to be made, given that the environment we're in, we will certainly make them. We're not going to put uh, people unnecessarily at risk. But we're also not going to do is just shut down and say, well. COVID-19 is with us till we have a vaccine. We know we're gonna have a vaccine, so no more planning, no more coming to Jacksonville, no more events. We're just not gonna do that. We're gonna plan as if and react accordingly when we get into it. Um, as it relates to uh, uh, one city, one Jacksonville, uh, that doesn't mean we're always gonna all agree. Uh, the two political parties have very different views on many issues. Uh, and that is one of the things that makes America great. They get to debate those issues in a free society with free speech. And that's part of what the conventions are about. And then we have an election and we peacefully, uh, whoever wins that election peacefully assumes power. Uh, so I would be honored to be a part of uh, either political party having a convention in our city, having that debate and discussion, and letting the voters make a decision. Tarek with WJXT. 
Hey, Mayor, Tarek here with uh, Channel 4. Thank you. Uh, the Jacksonville, what are your thoughts on, on a gas tax that's being proposed now by a city councilman uh, in the creation of the Urban Core Development Authority? The gas tax money uh, would be used to address longstanding racial disparities in Northwest Jacksonville that demonstrators have, have highlighted. What are, what are your thoughts about, about a gas tax and, and getting some of these communities, things that were promised some 52 years ago, uh, broken promises? Yeah, well, at first, let me say, sorry for mispronouncing your name. We know each other, and sometimes yes, you're okay. reading off of a whiteboard, you just make mistakes, so I apologize for that. Um, I'm open to it. Uh, I need to have a more detailed discussion about use, but yeah, I think that the gas tax is a vehicle uh, that we could potentially use to invest in neighborhoods that have been uh, that have been not been invested in equitably and that have been left behind. And so uh, I'm, I'm very, very open to and interested in the idea. I think it's a, I think it's a very positive development. Ellen, last question with the Jack's Business Journal. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, two questions for you. One, I was hoping to get an update on the stimulus plan that Councilmember Cumber introduced. Um, do you know when people will start to receive those payment cards? Um, and then secondly, I was curious, um, in terms of the protests that have been popping up in Jacksonville, are you concerned about any impact on small businesses similar to what we've seen in other cities? Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to get the specifics on the additional stimulus. Uh, I believe it's just a, it's an expansion of what we're already doing now. Uh, so we'll get you some more specifics on that so you can um, include that in your coverage. And I'm sorry, the, oh, the other part of your question was, I think, businesses, small businesses as it relates to protests. Um, mm -hmm. Coming through COVID-19, people suffered economically. Clearly, clearly small businesses, and uh, they want to get back to uh, serving their customers and generating income. At the same time, uh, we saw again last night, peaceful protest. Um, that is a right in this country, and we honor that in this city. And uh, as long as it's peaceful, uh, business can go about their business. And that's what our city has demonstrated, but for one blip uh, last weekend on Saturday night. Thank you, everybody, again, for your coverage. And uh, I'll see you again uh, on the next update.